Borrowing a quote from Shopbot Tools founder Ted Hall, CNC machines are amazing, but they're not magic. My job is to make them fun. So today we're going to review one of his machines, the Shopbot desktop. The best analogy that I've been able to come up with to explain the differences between a table router and a laser cutter is that a table router is like a manual car. You're a lot more involved with the process. You have hold downs to deal with, uh, you have different bit sizes, and you have different settings you play around with, with RPM and so forth. So this machine takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once you do, it's a lot of fun, just like a manual car. You go back to automatic and you feel like you're missing something. Now what we're going to do for this video is I'm going to explain to you the machine first, then after that we're going to cut something, because I know you just don't just want to look at me, you want to see something being made. I've removed the enclosures just so you can more clearly see the industrial spindle that I have on my ShopBot desktop. This spindle here is capable of moving 12,000 RPMs, and it's one horsepower. Here is the chuck, and as you can see, there's no bit. So what we're going to do now is install a bit on the machine. A lesson that I learned rather quickly after getting my ShopBot desktop is that you can never have too many bits. So what I do is I buy them from Amazon for roughly 10 bucks each. Here in Australia the same bit is roughly $30. And I get a few hundred dollars worth and I get them shipped to me here. What I use is straight double flute bits. And they're 1 8 inch by 3 8 And they work fantastic for the plywood that I use for my, all my prototyping. Now the advantage I have is I always cut the same thickness of board and basically everything's always the same. So my setup is very simple. I just need one kind of bit and a lot of them. Now as for bits, they can last up to one or two weeks or sometimes they break three or four in one shot. Um, there's no way to predict it so just have more so that when you need them you have them. I took the chuck out. Now here you'll see a little line. So you just line it up to that little line. And then you just spin it in manually. So that's finger tight. And then what you do is use the tools provided by a shop pot. And you just give it a quick whirl. And you just tighten it a little bit and you're done. You now have a fresh bit and it's the same process each time you break a bit, you just loosen it up, take it out, put a new one in. No big deal, really easy to do. Now that we have a bit installed into the machine, let's take a look at the gantry system itself. So here we have the stepper motor for the Z axis. So up and down, it, this thing just turns around and it moves it up and down. Here we have the X axis stepper motor left and right and underneath the machine we have a Y stepper motor moving it forward and backwards. Now what's really important about this machine that I want you to focus in on is the construction. This is all extruded aluminum and solid steel. This is very important because when you're cutting through material it's putting a lot of pressure on the entire frame itself. If you make something out of very cheap material what will happen is your machine starts bending because of all the forces involved and it could actually break. This thing here is incredibly rigid and it will not bend or fold or break uh, no matter what you do with it. Now here we have our sacrificial board. This is very important because you don't want to be engraving into uh, the bed of the machine or the aluminum deck. Taking a look at the side of the machine, here we have the power switch that controls the spindle. I, I just use the default settings for everything, so I never play around with this. But if you want to incrementally increase or decrease the RPMs, which you could also do in the software, this is the place to do it. Here we see a side profile of the extruded aluminum. Uh, this deck is incredibly strong, and again, it, it will not bend no matter how much pressure you put on it. And it's what you use to hold down the MDF sacrificial board that I have here. Here we have a limiting switch for the x-axis that prevents the spindle from continually hitting onto this and going on forever. This is the limiting switch for the y-axis, so again, so it doesn't keep going forward forever. One thing I want you to notice here are the very strong rails. Um, even though this fills up with uh, particles from when you're cutting, 
it still doesn't prevent the machine from moving. It just shows you how strong it is. Now the most important part of this machine is this. This helps you control the z-axis so it knows that it's level at zero. And another important part of this machine is the emergency on and off switch. This is very important because the last thing you want to do is be screaming around with your head cut off because you can't figure out how to turn the machine off if something happens. This is very important and it will become your friend whenever you break bits. So after many months at sea and in storage, let's see if this thing works. And I hear something revving up. That means it's alive and we're in action. Now that I have the shop bot running, I plugged it into the laptop. Now let's see if I can get it to move. So it found the shop bot, which is great. Let's see. One of the first things I like to do is set up the z-axis. Once you have that zeroed, it's very easy to control the working of the machine. So this is why it's important to be able to open this up. Stick the plate in. You want to make sure it's right under the bit. What I'm going to do now is bring the z-axis up a bit, just so it doesn't hit my boards. And then after that, I'm going to tell it to set up the home. So x and y, I want it to figure that out. So home, x, y axis using proxy switches. <laughs> Now we have X, Y, Z all figured out. Now before I do any cutting, what I'd like to do is warm up the spindle. The spindle has been spun for almost a year, so I'm going to run the process twice just to make sure everything's nicely lubed. When I was in Canada originally cutting these projects in the garage, it usually got below zero and I'd warm up the spindle twice just to make sure everything was nice and warm. Now the spindle is already warm but again it hasn't run for almost a year so just to be on the extremely safe side I'll run the spindle warm up routine one more time to make sure everything is perfect. So just to review, we got the Z axis zeroed, X and Y zeroed, and now we also have the spindle nice and warm. I ran it three times, normally you just have to run it once. So the first thing we're going to do here, I have the files here that I grabbed from cncking.com, and 
part file load, and we'll grab the first one, which is drill. What you want to do is have the bit drill the holes that you want to have so that you don't go over them with the bit, which is something I've done a few times. So we're going to open that. And then it's going to ask us to start it. Now, as you can hear, it's incredibly quiet. And now I know exactly where to put the screws so my path doesn't go over them. I tend to put a lot more screws than I need to uh, just because I've had stuff move around in previous uh, cuttings. So put too many instead of not enough. What I'm going to do now is move the arm out of the way. So it's very easy for me to screw all this stuff in. And let's screw away. These screws are a little bit larger than I would like, but they'll do the job. Notice the head is massive. Uh, I didn't notice that until afterwards, but I give myself a lot of room that it won't be an issue. This is why it's really nice because I really can't see the pattern that I'll be cutting other than on the computer. So being able to set them up previously before you even do the job, really, really helps. Sometimes I miss a screw spot or two, but I think I'm all right this time around. <sighs> yep, I think that's about it. Uh, that's not holding down very well, but should be all right. All right, back to the computer. Now something very important that you don't want to do here is load up the drill file again, because that's going to guarantee you, you uh, break your bit. So now we're going to do the pockets, which don't go all the way into the material, just about halfway in my case. Now normally I'd have the vacuum running, but in this case I just want to do everything real time, and I want to be able to speak over the machine, so I don't have that running yet. So the reason why you want to do pockets is so that you can put the guides through the wheels for this stegosaurus without having to go all the way through. So it's nice and hidden. So in this case I have four wheels, so there's four pockets that need to be done.
Now that we have the pockets done, let's check them out. And they look great. Again, I just wanted roughly three mil into the material and I have six mil plywood here. The next thing we do are the inside parts. Now you want to do the inside parts after because you're not actually cutting the pieces out yet. So if you cut the pieces out first and then do the inside parts, they might move. But if you do the inside first, there's nothing outside uh, to be cut. Because every time you cut the board, you introduce a new level of, uh, of play. And things will start moving around. So we're going to open that. Now it's cutting all the holes. This is normally when it gets extremely dusty. And you can also hear the machine going through the material twice. That's because I have two passes. Now what I did is increase the spindle speed a little bit so it cuts faster so you don't have the roughness anymore. And we are done. Now uh, let's just look at it a little bit closer. And some of these inside parts should be a little loose. And you can see, you just take it out with your hand. Good. Now let's do the outside parts. Now it's exactly the same process. Open the file. Now we have outside. So what I did here is I vacuumed the table a little bit uh, just to, so you can see the parts a little bit better. And now we're going to cut away. You notice the spindle going up and down a little bit while it's moving. The reason for that is because it's making tabs.
So again, it's doing two passes. Uh, the first pass, I believe, is 3.2 mil, and the second pass is another 3.2 mil. And because I have six mil plywood, or a quarter inch, that means that I go all the way through the board, which makes assembly very easy, because the parts just pop out. The reason why you have the tabs is to make sure that the piece doesn't come out while it's cutting, because uh, that could screw things up a bit.
as you can see, so far we have lots of sawdust. This is why the vacuum is really nice. So I'm not being very nice to the bit right now, but it's just to show you what goes through uh, every time I cut a project with the ShopBot desktop. done. And we are done. So how's that for precision? We have all the screws and we went, we went around all of them. With, now that we're done cutting, what we're gonna do now is move it out of the way so that I can unscrew everything. I noticed somewhere in the middle there I don't have a screw. So I'll just set it up so that this is right in the middle and I can easily take out all the screws. All right, put the drill the other way. Now this is a simple project. I have other projects that take up to 12 boards. So that's why I usually speed them up in the videos because it's like watching paint dry. All right, so this should be loose. Should be able to take it out. There we go. It's now been one day since you saw the video of me uh, cutting this. And what I noticed is it cut great, but it didn't cut all the way through. This is because on my sacrificial board here, I've been cutting so many models with it. This is still the original one that Bill Young did for me, by the way, but almost two years ago. Um, I have almost an inside going like that. Because I'm always cutting around the inside, but I never cut the periphery. So that means when this board is flat, the center is pretty much hollow. Uh, the solution to this is normally just to resurface the table. But after almost two years, this surface is pretty much finished. It's got more screw holes than anything else. Uh, so the hold down uh, to hold everything into place really sucks right now. So what I'm gonna do is unscrew this. I just finished cutting a sheet of MDF and we're gonna put a new sheet of MDF in here and get rid of this one, because it's finished. Now this is something I really like about the ShopBot desktop is that you have T-slots for the bed. This is wonderful because it means that you have amazing hold down and because it's all extruded, extruded aluminum everything is completely flat now what I'm going to do I'm just going to loosen a few of these because I want to keep it there Originally I was thinking about making the new holes for the new MDF to fit on this board uh, using a drill press, but I got the ShopBot desktop, so I made the files for it and we're gonna cut it with the ShopBot. So 
since we're just basically drilling holes with a shot bot, the hole down will be too much of an issue. Uh, so I'll just screw the other MDF right onto it. We do the Z zeroing and we should be all set. This one's going to be slightly different from what I have here because what I want to do is have it so that all the screw holes are on the side instead of having some in the middle. I know there might be bowing issues but I'm not too concerned about that because it's easier just to replace the whole board um, instead of resurfacing again and again because again resurfacing doesn't solve all the problems with the screw holes. So you basically end up with an MDF sheet full of holes that's rather useless. I'll just tighten it a little bit more after I've put a few holes in here. Since I know all the holes are going to be on the edges, the best place to hold this MDF board down is on the front where I won't have to drill anything in with the ShopBot desktop. I also have a row here, but here's where we're going to be drilling. And I actually have it, this is 16 mil, the other one was 20 mil. So it's a little bit smaller, or less thick. So what I'm going to do here is actually go through this one and into the other one, just to make sure I go all the way through. So what I'm doing here is manually moving the spindle, because I want the bit to be pretty much right on the corner over here. And now all I do is set 0, X, and Y. The Z is perfect, so I don't want to manually zero that to where it is now. There we go. And we have 0, 0, so everything's perfect. Just to give you an idea of what's going on here, this is Partworks. This is what you use to make the tool paths. Um, these little boxes just represent uh, where I want uh, the T-slots to intersect with the screws that are going to hold it down. Now I have two sets of circles here. The one on the outside is the head, which I'll show you here. And the smaller one is here. So I've already saved these things uh, as ShopBot files. A really nice feature about this software is you could actually do previews. So I just did one, let's do another one. And there you go, I have a preview of exactly what the ShopBot will be doing step by step. If you're very observant, you'll notice that the board already had massive uh, circles on it before I did the cutting. The reason for this is John the CNC King got radius screwed up with diameter. 
So what I did is I cut all these things first with a, a radius of 14 mil. And what I really wanted was a diameter of 14 mil. It's not a big deal. It's a scrap, paper, scrap wood anyway, so who cares? But if I could screw up and NASA can screw up, so can you. Now, let's cut these through the holes. Again, I'll turn the vacuum on for this. And what I'll do is give it a good vacuum, and we'll go from there. Vacuum went great, and now I notice all these little holes. What I'm guessing happened is when I surfaced uh, the bore the first time, um, I brought it down a bit, and I used a little bit longer screws. So just the tip of the screw was actually going into the uh, aluminum here. Not nice, but these things are easily replaced. Not a big deal. This is why this sacrificial board is very important. So otherwise, I'd have to replace the whole thing. And that would be a real big pain. All right, so I got all the screws in where I wanted to. And we're going to slide this thing in. Now this is why I want it right on the edge, because it's nice and easy to align things. I do is tighten them in and we're in business. Now I'm leaving a lot more room here because in the future I like to do hold downs using clamps and if it's over here I got all my cutting surface here and I got plenty of room to play around with other things that I want to do. Now that I have everything nice and tight, I'm going to put this thing in. Now because my board is thinner, I'm not using the same screws as last time because they would actually go all the way through into the table. This doesn't support anything, it's just to keep everything square, so it's not a big deal anyways. It doesn't support any weight. Yeah, 
And there we go, perfect. Let's just put in a sample board. And that's pretty good. And now time to put that one in. Two. This just locks it basically into place until I screw in until I screw in the plywood anyway. So the, again, this is a supporting thing, it's just very temporary. All it has to do is hold long enough for the shop bot to drill all the screw holes for me. And we are completely finished. That's great. I hope you really enjoyed the video. It's a lot longer than I thought it would be, but I wanted to show every aspect of the ShopBot desktop. Now this is very much an industrial machine. Uh, it cuts through anything, so steel, wood, glass, uh, even vinyl. Vinyl is something you can't do with a laser cutter because of the chlorine gas that's released. It doesn't matter if you're cutting or engraving, you just can't do it with a laser. Now this thing weighs about 45 kilograms or about 100 pounds, uh, so it's not that heavy. It's easy to carry on one or two people. I've carried it around myself. And it's not too much fun, but it's doable if you need to do it. As for area, you want to give yourself maybe a half meter to a meter square. Uh, but I recommend two or three just to be able to move material in and out. What else can you do with this? Well, you can put a 3D digitizing pen on it. And that allows you to trace materials. Another thing you do is put a diamond drag or a drag knife. Uh, another cool thing you do is actually set up a rotary index with it. So it ends up being like a little mini lathe, which is really cool. Well, that's it for the ShopBot desktop. I hope you enjoy it. If you want to contact them for anything about it, feel free to do so, shopbottools.com. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Come on, baby girl, let's get it going on. I'ma hit the highway and do it my way. It ain't no game plus, so I don't play games. I keep it up straight, right up in your face. So make your mind up, cause life is too short. I got the best on, boy, put your belt on. Stop acting all cool, like Kanye West. Boy, you'll be riding through the wire and the time again. Right? You don't want that, no. I don't want that, no. These goes are the things and chicks so slow, slow. Hit the backseat when you're doing the licking, kissing, squeezing. Do the damn thing, man.